Brought to you by Nectarola. Once that feel-good flavor grabs hold of your cerebral cortex, you'll be buzzing for more. Take it from Madame Quimby herself. It's sweet as gold, makes every day sunny, and don't forget to call me honey. That's right, folks. Nectarola. And coming soon, new Manchurian Cherry Nectarola. It's an explosion of cherry flavor. Each batch is hive made with loving care in the fragrance of Troy's own pollen fields in every can. The fragrance. Yeah, right. I'd taken up cigars just to mask the stench. The air in Troy was a cocktail of diesel fumes and toxic pollen, and I was sucking it down like a barfly at closing time. The crawler we were chasing was a low-level arms buyer, connected to a string of bombings my partner and I were onto, and the whole thing gave me a rotten feeling in my thorax. But since the incident at the diner, Chris had been running on overdrive. Maybe I would too. I hadn't been shot 47 times. The kid was on a mission, all right. I just kept wondering if it was the same one I was on. Freeze. Put your hands up. All of them. Forget his hands, kid. Watch out for his mouth. His mouth. I got it. Oh, not again. Are you all right, partner? Yeah, it's just an exoskeleton wound. So stop acting like a pupa and stay on him, kid. Us cockroaches may not have taken over the planet, but it still takes a lot to put us down. Ah, my toe! Uh, yeah, uh, the name is Carruthers. Detective Rochi Carruthers, insecticide division. And that's my partner, Chris List. I should have known the kid was trouble when I first recruited her, but sometimes a little trouble is just what this situation calls for. This one's mine.
right, buddy. I'm taking you in for mouthing off. Yeah, Chris had been in the dark for a long time. But now in the glare of the harsh light, things didn't look so good. How'd you get into this mess? Well, maybe I got a little ahead of myself here. Let's backtrack. Fact is, the kid was always sleeping with one eye open, cause when the other closed, the stuff she saw was much worse than anything lurking in the back alleys of Troy.
It's down to the Nectarola building now! There's been a murder, and the chairman, Madam Quinby, requested you special, Rochi. Just like old times, eh? <laughs> now don't screw this up! So, you and Quinby have a history I should know about, Rochi? I didn't picture you in with such a high-class crowd. Oh, yeah. People always told me I smell royally. <laughs> well, maybe it's because about 30 years back, I was the primary on the old royal egg case. Some egg-napping insects ran off with Quinby's rightful heir. We never found out who did it. I tell you, kid, something was rotten about that case, and I don't mean the egg. But I can never prove it. Either way, Madam Quinby was left without a successor. She's been in power way longer than normal because of it. She's so sweet in all the commercials. What's she like in real life? Tough. So we gotta be tougher, kid. She can be very charming and persuasive, so you gotta hold your ground. Just follow my lead. Okay, now lead this to me, kid. All right, can we get everyone to move over to this side of the room? Ah, Detective Carruthers, the years have treated you well. Could we perhaps have everyone over here instead? We were in the middle of a rather important rehearsal when the tragedy occurred. Um, well, uh, uh sure, Madam Quinby. Uh, th that, that, that would be fine, just fine. Ain't she just the bee's knees, kid? Oh, please call me honey. And who is your charming friend? Who? Oh, this, um, uh, this is my partner, Detective Chris List. Nice to... So, uh, what seems to be the problem, your honeyness?
Jimmy Sticks McGillicuddy was a low-life lava of an arms dealer, but that bug had his mandibles in every deal in the city. I knew he'd talk if we put the squeeze on him. Man, I, I can't handle these stakeouts, Rochi. I hate sitting around like this. You gotta stop being so antsy, kid. My gut's telling me he's mixed up in this whole thing. You gotta learn to trust the gut. And feed it! Patience wasn't a strong suit. Heck, it wasn't even in the hand she was dealt. Me, 
I learned long ago that sometimes you gotta stop and smell the fried dragonfly eggs. Hey kid, did I ever tell you about the Locust Brothers Stakeout? Mm-hmm. So there we were, just me and a baker's dozen of the city's finest. It felt like we'd been in that car for months. I'll never forget that smell from the back seat. We got us a stick up. Styx was a little twitchy, but I didn't expect any trouble getting him to talk. Follow me! Hey, Styx! What's the skinny? <laughs> Open up! He opened up all right, with both barrels. You all right, partner? I'm bleeding? Oh, wait. It's jelly. <laughs> Yeah, I'll be okay. After him, kid, I'll catch up.
like no, I swear. Now you gotta help me off this thing. I got terrible allergies. Give the boys in the allergen squad a call. Swell. When it came to perps, Chris could read them like a book. And Styx was a dog eared paperback that she had rolled up in her back pocket. He never stood a chance. Something didn't smell right at the diner, and it was more than the dung beetle hash. It was foul, and it smothered the docks like rancid hollandaise on the maggots benedict. This was the kind of place where deals are made, and lunch is lost. You're gonna have to work the joint alone, kid. They know my face in there almost as well as the health inspectors. Just take it nice and easy. I got this. No worries. No worries. <laughs> yeah, right. That was like sending a rhino beetle into a china shop. <laughs>
easy there, pal. Was the service that bad? They're coming! They're coming! He's crazy! Please don't hurt me! I've got slugs at home that need me! They're coming! It's an explosion of cherry flavor! Uh, right, buddy. How about something to go instead? Like I said, no worries. Yeah, right. <laughs>
Where you been? So, back to where I started. She had four legs. You'd think she'd use them, but the kid stood her ground. She knew those robo-freaks had answers. Chris had a clip full of questions. She punched the scumbuck's ticket, and the truck tipped worse than a centipede with only 97 legs.
robo-bugs are hominids? Ew. Yeah, that guy's uglier than my ex-wife. All of them. What are hominids doing in the city in robotic bug suits? And why the heck are they kidnapping spit bugs and stealing Nectarola trucks? Well, this put my antennas into a twisted knot. So this left us with a murder, a string of bombings, a deranged acid-spitting bug, some exploding soda cans, an army of robo-suited hominids, and a splitting headache. How those hominids figured into Chris's nightmares, we had no idea. But hey, who says dreams don't come true? good cop, incompetent cop this time, right? We got a lot of unanswered questions. Don't worry, I'm a rock. Don't tell me it won't be ready, Mr. Foreman. My customers expect a sweet burst of carbonated fruity goodness, and I expect you to do what you're told. I also expect you to call me honey. <clears throat> ah, detectives. All right, Queen Bee, this is how it's gonna be. Now, Detective, let's have no more talk about following orders, please. You'll spoil our trip. Um, well, I, uh... No, I think we're just going to... Oh, of course, the young cop with a mind of her own. No doubt you'd like to chat more about your investigation. Although I was really hoping to enjoy a bit of rest. Yeah, I'd hate to get in the way of your beauty sleep, Quinby. But if you want our protection, you're gonna have to work with us. So if you don't mind, I'd like to ask you a few more questions.
kid found something all right. But we were making an unscheduled detour on the ground. And it looked like we were taking on some new passengers. I'm glad I wasn't taking tickets, cause something tells me these robo-things were looking for more than a ride. Stuff. The kid had a ride of her own to take. I hope she packed light. Who could guess her train of thought? Hope she didn't trip on... All right, enough of the travel metaphors. The kid was on her own. As the dung beetles say, the kid was in a load of caca. Chief Chigger, you don't understand. The hominids are organized and they've captured Rochi and Quinby. They're plotting something big. Yeah, a big imaginary army of them are gonna storm the city, then break into your apartment and wake you up. Then maybe you'll realize you've lost it. It and your job. But Chief. But nothing. I got a mission cop, a mission VIP, and me a blue bug is furious. Now hand over your badge and weapon, kid.
All of them! Now get out! And if I catch you sleep crawling anywhere near this case, I'll arrest you! Chris may have lost the badge, but either way, she was going back into the tunnels to find me. And hopefully the answers to who the Robobugs were, and what was really down there. Oh my god. Chris's battle with those lunatics in the plastic wrap helmets had flushed us straight to the heart of their operation. A foul little address on the corner of Subway and Sewer, whose biggest architectural influence was being built where the sun don't shine. It was a scrap metal city, where the buildings drip from the walls and clog the abandoned storm tunnels like one of my arteries. And they'd constructed it right under our noses. All the more shocking when you consider the smell.
talking about? Oh no, I didn't mean in here. I meant in here. That really opened up my sinuses. And something else. Enter the door, my dear girl. That's opportunity sure to get down. So the Robo-Bozos had some secret subway connected to the pollen fields. It didn't add up, but a lot of things about this place didn't turn out as advertised. These weren't the pretty fields you see in the commercials, but industrial greenhouses full of more filth than my bathroom. Chris had no idea what he was in for. Yeah. 
In her typical delicate way, Chris grabbed herself a truck and was on the most important mission of her life. To save me. Oh yeah, and the rest of the city too. Kidnapping. Have you nearly botched the biggest PR stunt in history? The beloved spokeswoman staggering to the podium, bravely announcing the new soft drink flavor, though only recently having escaped her ruthless captors. Good lord, they'll be drinking out of my hands after that. <laughs> You're lucky I still need you filthy hominids. Oh, there might be a few more tragic accidents, like the one that befell my poor dear assistant, Busby. Did you really think I wouldn't find out that he was helping you sell the explosive batches on the black market? But, please, spare us, so oh great one. You things have spines, don't you? Well, it's time you use them. I can't let anything spoil my high fructose television extravaganza when I unveil the new Manchurian Cherry Nectarola and utter our new slogan. The bioengineered pheromones in all those carbonated time bombs will bring the city of Troy under my control. It's an explosion of cherry flavor, and I will rule like a god. <laughs> oh, dear. It seems that someone slipped you a taste of the new flavor a bit early. Well, I'm sure you've got plenty of work to do. Suddenly it all made sense. Quinby was loading up her Nectarola with mind-altering pheromones. That spit bug from the diner must have tried some, and when Chris accidentally uttered the trigger phrase, his saliva gland popped and he went bonkers. <laughs>
20 years ago. What? That's when the last royal egg arrived. Sadly, Madam Quinby wasn't ready to give up her power. She hired my people to steal the egg and destroy it, making it look like a botched egg napping. I experimented on the egg in an attempt to create an allergen-resistant hybrid of hominid and insect, the future of both species. But I had to wipe the young hybrid's memory and let her go. It was much too dangerous to keep her here. This is starting to clear up more than just my sinuses. Chris, you are that hybrid. You are Quinby's royal heir. You have the potential of her power, and much more. I blocked it, hoping to keep you from harm until you were ready. But that was just the beginning. Here.
it was showtime, and Quinby was about to get a couple surprise guests. I wasn't sure what was in Chris's script, but I expected some kind of mommy dearest routine from the host. Next, I'd ad lib a bit myself with some hot lead. And then it was curtains, take a bow, and cover. Well, I see you've decided to join me for our little presentation. Won't you have a seat? Show's over, Quinby. Sorry to disappoint you, my dear, but I believe your partner feels otherwise. Don't you, Detective Carruthers? Whatever you say, honey. Carruthers, you always were incompetent. Well then, Chris, I guess we'll just have to keep this in the family. Done, Quinby. Never! You're not the only one who can play pheromone mind games, so you might as well just confess now. Okay, I did it! I did it! Not you. What good would it do? If I admitted to killing my assistant, if I told you I found out he was working with those foul hominids, the city will soon be wiped out in a toxic pollen storm anyway! The hominids planted explosives throughout the factory. After my press conference, their plan would have been neutralized. They would have been under my power. But you stopped that. Goodbye, dear daughter. What a pity we weren't closer. What? So you're the royal egg? Okay, no time for family hugs, Chris. We gotta get down there. Way ahead of you, partner.
My package has finally arrived. Thank you for ensuring it's safe delivery, detectives. Another royal egg. Nice to get a look at the thing finally after 30 years. So, that makes you the heir to Nectarola, kid. Hey, how's it feel? A any chance you want to buy the precinct a new coffee machine or maybe, say, a donut shop? Forget about it, Rochi. I'm not the heir. I'm a cop, and that's enough for me. Besides, this little one will be able to take over soon enough. So it turned out there were a few more skeletons than usual in Chris's family closet. And once that door opened, the bones rained down on her for a while. But she somehow waded through it all and saved the city, solved the murder, and even closed the book of my 30-year-old case in the process. I knew my gut was right about her. Chigga's case board was gonna be full, and there'd be a place again for Chris on the squad. Which is all a good cop really needs. Well, that in a baker's dozen a royal jelly filled. The fragrance. Yeah, right. I'd taken up cigars just to mask the stench. The air in Troy was a cocktail of diesel fumes and toxic pollen, and I was sucking it down like a barfly.